بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله أحمده وأستعينه وأستهيه وأستغفره وأؤمن به جل وعلا ولا أكفره وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام بالهدى ودين الحق ليدهره على الدين كله ولا كريه المشركون All praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, His assistance, and His guidance. We believe in Him and do not disbelieve in Him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger. Allah said him that is Muhammad with Deen al Haq, the religion, the way, the methodology of truth. This way of life known as Islam will rise to its proper position in this world, whether the wishers like it or not. Amma ba'd fa'inna astikal hadith kitabullah wa awtaka yagura kalimatu taqwa wa khayilu melali melatu ibrahim wa khayilu sunani sunatu muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashraful hadith dhikrullah وأسدوا الكساس هذا القرآن وخير الأمور أوازموها وشير الأمور مقتاتوها وأسدوا الهدي هدي الأنبياء وأشرف الموت كتل الشهداء وأما علامة دلالة البعض الهدى وخير الأمال ما نفع وخير الهاج ما إثباء وشير الأمة أمة الكعب. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the most truthful of discourses is كتاب الله. The most trustworthy word is taqwa or fear of Allah. The best of the community is the community of Prophet Ibrahim. The best way of life is the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The remembrance of Allah is the most glorious of all things. The best of all narrations is Quran. The best acts are those requiring the highest degree of will and determination. The worst acts are those based on innovation. The best way of life is the one adopted by the prophets of Allah. The most glorious death is the death of the martyr. The most wretched blindness consists of going astray after finding the right way. The best acts is the one that yields benefits. Best guidance is that which people may be able to follow. The worst blindness is the blindness of the heart. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah yahmaru bil ahli wal ihsani wa itai dhal qurba وَيَنْهَا لِلْفَشَائِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَعْدِ يَعِدَّكُمْ لَعَلَاكُمْ تَذَكَّرُمْ Allah commands justice, the doing of good, and the brotherly, the kith and kin, and He forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you that you may receive admonition. Those whom Allah and His plan willing to guide, he opened their breast to Islam. فَمَنْ يُرِدِيَ اللَّهُ وَنْ يَدِيَهُ يَشْرَ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ يَا أَيُّهَا أَلَدِينَ آمَنُوا أَتَّقُوا لَا حَكَّ تُكَاتِهِ وَلَا تَعْوَدُونَ إِلَى وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Oh, you who believe, fear Allah, as he should be feared and do not die except in a state of Submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tasimu bihabillahi jamiyan wa la tafarraku. Wa tkuru wa tkuru niyamatallahi alaykum and hold fast all together by the rope which Allah stretches out for you and be not divided amongst yourselves and remember with gratitude, Allah's favor on you. Kuntum kairu umatin ukrijat lal nasi tamanuna bil marufi wa tanhauna lal munkar wa tukminuna billah 
You are the best of peoples evolved for mankind, enjoining what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. Akulu kali hada wa staffullah li Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Wassalatu wassalamu ala khayru al-Mursaleen, Muhammadin al-Nabi al-Umbi, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, amma ba'di yakul Allahu ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Kareem, inna Allah wa malaykatuhu yusalun ala al-Nabi, ya ayuha ala dina amanu, sulu alayhi, Wassalimu Tasliman Alamu Sari Ala Sayyidina Mulana Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya Ayuha Al-Ladina Amanu Malakum Ida Kida Lakum Anfiru Fi Sabili Allahi Atakaltum ila al-ardi Arditum bil-hayat al-dunya min al-akira Fama mata'u al-hayat al-dunya fil-akira ila kilalum Oh, you believe what is the matter with you that when you are asked to go forth in the cause of Allah, you cling heavily to the earth. Do you prefer the life of this world to the hereafter? But little is the comfort of this life as compared with the hereafter. The Yusuf Ali commentary says, the immediate reference is to the exposition of Tabu in Hijra 9. For which see the introduction of this surah, but the lesson is perfectly general. When a call is made on behalf of a great cause, the fortunate ones are those who have the privilege of responding to the call. The unfortunate ones are those who are so engrossed in their parochial affairs that they turn a deaf ear to the appeal they are suffering from a spiritual disease. The other one says the choice is between two courses. Will you choose a noble adventure and the glorious privilege of following your spiritual leader or grovel on the earth for some small worldly gain or for fear of worldly loss? The people who hesitate to follow the call of Tabuk were deterred by one, the heat of the summer in which the expedition was undertaken on account of the threat of the existence of the little community, and two, the fear of losing fruit harvest which was ripe for gathering. You can imagine how quick uh, a harvest can go bad in uh, in Arabian desert. I mean, if the right, if the fruit is ready to pick today, or it's going to be ready in two days, you have to pick it now. In fact, three or four days ahead of time, because if the heat is going to make it uh, pass along pretty soon, you'll have a ripe fruit. Unless you go forth, he will punish you with a grievous penalty and put others in your place. But him you would not harm in the least, for Allah has power over all things. Tanfiru. Tanfiru, go forth, march onward, be ready to strive and suffer, for this is the condition of all progress in the spiritual and moral as well as the physical world. According to the homely English proverb, God helps those who helps themselves. 
inactivity and lethargy are fatal. No one can rest on his oars. Man is not necessary to Allah, but Allah is necessary to man. If a nation receives favors and fails to deserve them, it will be replaced by another, as has often happened in history. We may take this as a special warning to Islamic nations. If you help not your leader, it is no matter, for Allah did indeed help him when the unbelievers made him leave. He had no more than one companion, the two were in a cave, and he said to his companion, Have no fear, for Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his peace upon him and strengthened him with forces which you saw not, and humbled to the death the words of the unbelievers. But the words of Allah is exalted to the heights, for Allah is exalted in might wise. So it said the book expedition was not a failure. Though some hesitated, many more joined in. But a more striking example was when the Prophet Wasallam was forced to leave Mecca and performed his famous hijrah. His enemies plotted for his life. He had already sent his followers to Al Medina. Ali radiallahu anhu who had volunteered to face his enemies in his house. His single companion was Abu Bakr. The two concealed themselves in the cave of Thawar, three miles from Mecca. For three nights, with the enemy prowling around in great numbers, in fruitless search of them, we were but two, said Abu Bakr, nay, said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for Allah is with us. Faith gave their minds peace, and Allah gave them safety. They reached Medina, and the glorious chapter opened for Islam. The forces that helped them were not seen, but their power was irresistible. So it says, unless you go forth, he will punish you with a grievous penalty and put others in your place. But him you would not harm in the least, for Allah had power over all things. So this call, uh, Tanfiru, go forth, Anfiru, means to go forth. And of course, this means. Go forth in the cause of Allah. And if we don't go forth in the cause of Allah, this uh, situation of exchange, of transfer, of canceling your date with destiny and giving it to somebody else. Uh, many times in history, one people keep continue to be transferred, changed, and exchanged for another. Remember, as the commentary says, it is not that Allah needs us, we need Allah. So when it tells us to go forth in the cause of Allah, it's for our benefit, to rise to the occasion, to face the challenge. As the uh, commentary said, they basically are saying no pain without gain. If you want to improve, if you want to get better, you have to face the challenges that uh, that face you. Then it goes on to say, Fanzala wahu sakina tu alayhi. Then Allah, Fanzala, sent down, Anzala, sent down, right? As sakina. This is a special God-given peace and tranquility. It's not just like chilling and being relaxed. It is a special condition 
that when you get it, you know that this is the real deal. It is different from the things that we uh, experience in Jailia, where we're feeling good, we're feeling relaxed, all the bills are paid, stuff like that. You don't have no general worry. That usually lasts for a couple of days, maybe even a whole day. But that uh, feeling of wonderment, gold is fleeting, isn't that right? Because the next day, uh, by nightfall, something had come up to blow your little normal high. But this Asakina now is sent down. This was sent down on Abu Bakr because he was the one that was nervous. So that's why Abu Bakr's, everybody think Abu Bakr Sadiq is Abu Bakr's most famous nickname. No, the second of the two. Because in the history, he's the second of the two. He's the one that went on the Hijra with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now they had a Bedouin guy, but he's very uh, seldom mentioned. But now, just imagine the date of our calendar uh, relates to the Hijra. The Hijra is technically when the state power of Islam begins. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrates, right, from Mecca to Yathrib or al Medina. We talked about Suraka before, but we'll talk about him some other time. This time we'll talk about the thread or What's hanging in the balance? And what is separating the future of the world of Islam? You can see the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives things. For instance, they're only three miles from their home and they're running around trying to get away and they hide for three days in a cave. But this is not, don't think of a deep, deep cave. Think of a cave where uh, Abu Bakr is saying, if they look down, they'll see our feet. It's a small indentation. And the other thing about it is, the people come up to the cave. Why don't they go in the cave? Why? It's a spider's web and a bird's nest. Let me say this again. Those would be Consider some of the weakest structures that exist. The whole 1.5 billion or more believers today, their future, their names, their religion, where they live, their massages all over the world, the five daily prayers going on all over the world, the struggle that is going on to uplift humanity and the revival of Islam is going on today and there are battles and struggles in every part of the world and at that time uh, the whole thing is hanging on a spider web in a bird's nest. Right? So what we have to understand is a normal spider web is a spider web. And a normal bird's nest is a normal bird's nest where birds stay. When Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because later on it says, that Allah helped them with forces that you didn't see. So now we have to understand that that Jumlah, that army, that army is camped out inside of that bird's nest. Allah's army. Start all over again because you may miss the point. That Jundalah, that angels, those things that are helping Abu Bakr and Sadiq, right? And helping Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is clear that the bird nest and the spider web is given extraordinary reality at that time because that's the only thing. This was not a regular bird nest at that time. 
There's not a regular spider web at that time. Now we're just talking about things that we can get see because a lot of said they had the forces that you don't even see. So what I'm doing is conjuring up in my mind what I see. I see that that spider web is different. Because if the man would have just looked down, he'd have saw their feet. He's not in so cave. We think of a cave as a 10 feet back, 50 feet back, 20 feet back, a little tunnel. No, no, no. It's just an indentation. And covering it is birds nets, pigeons. And the spider's web. I run in the woods sometimes. Y'all know you run spider's web hits you all the time. And big as you are, spider web don't have no effect on you at all. But it catches flies, it catches little things, right? But this spider web is different. So now it says, if you help not your leader, it, it ain't no big deal. For Allah did indeed help him when the unbelievers made him leave. He had no more than one companion. The two were in the cave. He said to his companion, have no fear. Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his peace upon him and strengthened him with forces which you saw not. And humbled to the depth the words of the unbelievers. The word of Allah is exalted to the heights. For Allah is exalted in might wise. Anfiru kafafan wa tikalan wa jahidu bil amwalikum wa ansikum wa anfusikum fi subilillah dhalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum talamu Go forth, whether equipped lightly or heavily, and strive and struggle with your goods and your persons in the cause of Allah. That is best for you if you but knew. The commentary says, whether equipped lightly or heavily, is to be, take, is to be taken both literally and metaphorically. All were in fighting, and they were to bring such resources as they had, lightly armed or heavily armed, on foot or mounted. Experienced men for posts of danger, raw men for duties for which they were fit. All would and should help, even those who were too old or feeble to go, could contribute such money or resources as they had. If there had been immediate gain in sight and the journey easy, they would all without doubt have followed thee. But the distance was long and weighed on them. They would indeed swear by love. If we only could, we should certainly have come out with you. They would destroy their own souls, for Allah doth know they are certainly mine. And the commentary says, the arts and excuses of the hypocrites are here exposed. If there had been booty in sight or an easy walkover, they would have come. All their oaths are false, and in taking the false oaths, they are destroying the spiritual life. Indeed, the backsliders are jeopardizing their own physical lives in hanging back. If the enemy succeeded, they would all suffer. So this, dear believers, it is a Tabuk expedition. And it has some very good characteristics for us to hang on to. Uh, let me see here. Oh, we 
you believe what is the matter with you that when you ask to go forth in the cause of Allah, stuck heavily you are to the ground. <laughs> to be stuck. You have somewhere to go, something to do. The world or a great adventure is calling you, a great cause is calling you, a great necessity exists in the environment that we live in. But when the call to go forth, Fisa Bilila, now when you're going forth, Fisa Bilila, it's in the cause of Allah. So this is a just cause. This is not for money, this is not for power, but this is that Allah's words would reign supreme. But it says, you are stuck to the ground. Are you content with the worldly life rather than the hereafter? Al Hayat al Dunya fil Akhir, the life of this world. Most people understand the life of this world. They see it, they taste it, their senses realize it. Akira to us as Muslims is real. But it's way off somewhere. It's kind of like behind a great veil of history. Way off in the future. We know it's there, but evidently it don't have that much influence on our life because uh, our behavior proves that, isn't it right? So this saying, go forth, and the saying, the reason this is, this is, Ya ayyuha alladeen amanu. This is not Ya ayyuha al-nas, not old humanity, old mankind. This is you and me directly. Oh, you believe. Those who have stepped forward and taken this cause of Islam voluntarily. Those who have accepted Islam voluntarily with an open heart. But are you content with the world of life rather than the hereafter? But the enjoyment of worldly life will be in the hereafter insignificant. I think it uses the word khalil, khalilan. It means a little something that's trifling, inconsiderable, insignificant. So the life of this world, the one that we cling to, is Kalilu is Kali is insignificant. It has very little value. But we cling to that over Akira, which is the next world that has great value. If you do not go forth, he will chastise you with a punishment most painful and will substitute a people other than you, and you will not harm him whatsoever, and Allah is over everything omnipotent. Remember, it says, Tanfiru, Anfiru, go forth, go forth in the cause of Allah. Go forth for, it used the word jihad too, and Arabic. Rush for it, go for it. Take a chance. And then it says, whether you're equipped lightly or heavily, that means whether you got a lot or whether you got a little. Whether you're old and feeble or young and energetic. <laughs> It says that if you don't go for it, Allah will substitute you or replace you or exchange you. Just stop them. That means to substitute, to replace, exchange. Change to replace. 
Remember the hadith before that we went through last week, where in the Quran is saying that if you don't go forth, Allah will exchange you for another people and they won't be like you. And then they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is it that the Allah will exchange us for another people? Allah will love them and they will love Allah and they won't be like us. And Salman Farsi was there and he patted him on the shoulder. Oh, he patted him on the knee. So it'd be like these people, the Persians. Boy, he was mad about that in the 80s. Because in Ibn Kathir, this is what Saudi Arabia, Jordan, everybody, Iraq was fighting Iran. And in that whole, they didn't like that uh, hadith to be there. Some people said they tried to scratch it out, or block that out of that, uh, that tafsir, that section of tafsir. But you can't blot out a lot of words in the Quran. You can't do that. It's going to just pop back with you. Okay. So, if you help him not, but Allah indeed helped him when they drove him out, those who disbelieve, he bring a second of the two when they were in the cave, when he said to his companion, do not grieve, for Allah is with us. Allah sent down his sakina, remember? Fanzala Allahu sakinatun alayhi. Then Allah sent down his tranquility. We talked about that uh, a little while ago. When this Sakina hits you, it's different than the peace and tranquility of this world. Because this Sakina comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And aided him with troops you did not see, and rendered the words of those who disbelieved the lowest in the word of Allah, that is most subtle, and Allah is mighty and wise. So we talked about Sakina. And uh, I think this is Sufla. He frustrated the designs of the unbelievers and made them suffer decisive defeats. So that means lower. Go forth into jihad whether you are light and agile, being young, or you are heavy and slow, like us, being aged. Let me go that over that again. Go forth in jihad. Whether you are light and agile, being young, or you are heavy and slow, being aged. Then another word is, talks about light, slight, nimble, agile, and light. Thaka is thick or heavy or weighty, like me and you. You notice, even if you got a good bodybuilding program, if you notice some of the movie stars, when they start getting, in their late 30s and 40s, they start getting real thick. You know what I mean? I mean, they're working out hard. I remember, what's the guy uh, that played in Patriot, you know, Gibson, Mel Gibson? He used to have a rock solid, you could see all them, when he was praying brave heart, you could see all that six pack. He had that, there are some books that talk about his special workout. He did 4,000 or something, 400 sit-ups or something on that little bench just to keep tight there. But then a movie come along when he was playing, we were soldiers, he was older then, right? He was working out a lot, but he was puffed up. It happens to all of us. We go out there now, you see sometimes we all puffed up. We working out hard and heavy, lifting iron. But you can't puff up like a V no more. You puff up everywhere. Your lips puff up, your eyes puff up, your arms puff up, your chest, all that puff up too. You're doing all the bench presses, but your tummy puff up too. Look like you ain't out of shape, but you're not out of shape. It's just you fat, you thick. 
You, you heavy, you can't do nothing about it. I know y'all know one day you walk around and you got a pants of 32. <laughs> and something happened, the next day they don't fit. And they never fit again. Then you cruise along for a few years and all of a sudden those 34s don't fit anymore. You say, wait a minute, I'm on my diet, I'm running, don't make no difference, right? You get fit. And ain't nothing you can do with it. I mean, you could become a prisoner of like super diets and starvation. Right? I mean, I know how to get just a, a, even a V at 72, I can still do it. <laughs> but it ain't worth The starvation, all the repetition. Right? Running with sweat gear on. For what? I'm not going to get married no more. I'm 72. I don't care. You know, when you're old, you know, you be wearing four and five different colors and an old sweater. Remember when we was young, boy, how sharp we would be? When you get our age, I don't care all that. I don't know what you mean. Hey, man, that don't match. You got tweeds, plaids, and stuff. Polka dots on. So what? It sure is warm and comfortable, right? You don't care about what you look like. So a youngster will punish themselves doing 10,000 sit-ups, right? And eating out of a teaspoon. But after a while, you say, man, I'm thick. Nah, I don't care. I ain't even, hey, man, I'm not going to waste all my time. But when the call comes, you go for it. Whether you're thick and soarish or young and agile. You know what I mean? That's what this is talking about. And, and, and this is for me and you. Go forth light and heavy and fight with your properties and yourselves in the way of Allah. This is best for you if you uh, if you but knew. Were it a game, the journey's ease, they would have followed you. But far off seen, uh, thereby they misled those who disbelieved. That's, that, that, that's a whole other thing. In other words, if it's an easy journey, Everybody ready to go. And big game, like investors. Oh, we're going to be rolling in money, and you only got to put a little bit in to get a lot out. When I first came here to D.C., the Muslims had just been stung by, what do they call them, spirits? I said, how Muslims get stung by a pyramid scheme? Well, we did. Y'all remember that? But, uh, almost 30 years ago. The Muslims got stung by you just put in, then we go, uh, your money gonna make money and, uh, and you don't have to work no more because everybody come in after him, but after them, you gonna get 20% of their money. So it's now gonna be 80 people out there, right, and you gonna get $5 off all their $80. Every time they get $10, you're going to get five of all them 80 people. And then when they get 300 people, and the Muslims went for it. They was greedy and stupid. But somebody come promise you, but you put $100 in here, you're going to get 10 grand back in six months. And you do it, you're crazy. You're stupid. Yeah? The Muslims, when I first got here 30 years ago, uh, 28 years ago, they had been taken to the cleaners by some pyramid scheme. So you come here, want to open a masjid, start a masjid. They say, it's something wrong, man. They don't trust nobody no more. 
when we was using over on 16th Street, and we'd meet every Sunday, like we do here, like we, we got the five thousand dollars we had raised in a short time, and everybody was paranoid. That time we had him, man, we got five thousand dollars. He went on me and stuff. I said, you can't be no farther than Richmond. Five days think it's so small. I said, $5,000 to go over to Baltimore and pick him up. He came too far with five. That's how small. I said, he run off with five grand. But just uh, throw out a fishing net or something. He can't be far. Five grand? He ain't, he ain't in California for sure. He, he ain't in New York. That's four hours away. He probably in Silver Spring. Go over there and get it. Right? Well, we, we don't know, man. I said, hey, man. Now, it wasn't no time we raised money for our mustard around the corner. Later on, we said we're going to buy this place, a particular place. We said we're going to raise $200,000 now in that place on A Street. That sounded like we were talking about a billion dollars. That is 20 years ago or more. Everybody was snickering and laughing. They thought we were the craziest people in the world. Shoot, we bought this place and it cost 300 and some thousand dollars just to remodel it. What a building, you know. It had a baptismal pool. There was going to be a church down there. You could go down there and drown or get baptized. Right downstairs, the baptism, y'all remember. And we raise the money. This is because if you have confidence, thicker in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, these people that says, if you go forth, if you don't go forth, he's going to replace you. Now, I read this, this series of ayats because it relates to a time in Islam when this Tabuk expedition was coming. It's a very critical time. It's the hottest part of the year, and the crops, after two or three years of drought and everything before, now we got a bumper crop on the way, and we get a call that on the Romans up there are acting funny, so we're going to go up there and put a check on them. And as we say, if you lived on a farm, you know. Well, you know, if you buy fruit even at the store and you set it out in, in, on, in the warm weather, in three or four days, it's frightening. Better eat in the hurry. So imagine in Arabia, you ain't had a good crop for two, three, four years, and now you've got a buffer crop. The stuff is hanging all off the doggone tree branches. And you get a call to go forth in the cause of Allah. And when you get back, your stuff going to be dried on the vine. That's the way it is. Today, the whole Muslim world is struggling. But in the long run, we're winning this one hands down. When this is over, we'll go through periods of fitna. They will leave behind people to cause extra fitna. But when this is over, that whole so-called Middle East will be something that I ain't gonna call it what they said. An island of stability and a sea of turmoil. It'll be stable. And Islam is, is coming back. This is not Islam of 50, 60 years ago, post-colonialism where we were weak and feeble. Even the fitna that the people start against Islam turns out to wake us up. You see, everything is going our way. We're losing people by the millions around the world. But here we are in America. And that's where you and I come in. In America, when we accepted Islam years ago, People were strong on the Sunnah, 
and they were militant. Isn't that right? And they were anti-American. Over the last 30 years, the immigrant community have basically outmaneuvered and taken over the Islamic movement in America with the explicit help and guidance of the dear Americans. Why does America love the immigrant over you and I? Because the immigrant come here with a picture of America the beautiful, <laughs> right? He remembers back home, wherever back home was, it was miserable. You could work all day and wouldn't get nowhere. And the old king or the old dictator or the old president and his homeboys took everything and didn't leave you nothing. Right? So, you heard about America, this wonderful place. And part of it was true then and still true. If you come over here and keep your mouth shut and work hard, you can come here and drive a cab 12, 18 hours a day for a few years, buy your little 7-Eleven, you look up 15 years, you have a little money. Right? Working two, three jobs, it don't make no difference. Be able to send a little money back home. Because see, if you can send $200 a month, if you can send two, three hundred dollars a month back home, but don't send four hundred, which is pretty easy. Okay? Two hundred to her family, two hundred to your family. Man, they on the road, right? They on the road, and you saving all your money. You're not living no Negro life. Do you see immigrants come over here buying a big, brand new car? They may work in the same place as you, and they walking around with a cane. Right, and you drive an Escalade uh, BMW, right? No immigrants from history ever did that. In California, them Vietnamese came here to boat people, and they was living 20 in a house. Then they all worked them. Then pretty soon they split up and they got another house. So it's 10 in the house now. Ten in that house. Pretty soon they split up again. Now they got four houses. And them and their children was in that. They split up again, but when they keep splitting, they own everything they got. I don't care whether you're Koreans, I don't care whether you and right now in your neighborhood, they got yums and lums, and if you want some soul food, you can't hardly find it. Tell it to them. Is that right? You can't hardly find a greasy spoon, can you? You can't find a greasy spoon in D.C. And Dixie is right across the, the pump, right, right there, across the 14th Street Bridge. You in Dixie. And we were loaded Mason Dixon line here. Isn't that right? And you can't find a Negro greasy spoon. Hard. But you can find yums and lums and takeout and everything. Right? And you eat that. Why? Because the people came here and have a picture of America. Their picture is like, you know, we talk all this gangster talk here, but when we went in exile and we went to Tanzania and those other places, we went over there talking crazy. We glad they let us in. And the Negroes, it was revolutionaries over here against the government. Them governments wasn't treating the people all that nice. Well, we weren't saying that the Negro, if I said anything, they're going to throw me out and send me back to Leavenworth, Magnilla Island, to the penitentiary, right? None of us said we found the best thing going on over there and we were cheering. Cheerleaders. Yes, we was. All them gangsters, you look. The BLA leaders, Black Liberation Army, the Black Panthers, all of us, nobody said a word. In Algeria, in Tanzania, in none of them. In Egypt, in Sudan, we didn't open our mouth. Right? 
Even a few of the brothers went to Uganda. Idi Amin cut loose and we ain't said a word. But boy, he's a good brother. Right? So you don't expect an immigrant to challenge this government. That's your job and that's my job. Right? The fitness of the world starts here. The Zionist American Saudi cartel operates out of Washington, D.C. Isn't that right? And it's your job and it's my job. And now we're in a position to, to help Muslims of the world. But we got to get up and not cling heavily to the earth, the earth, mundane things, artists, everything that holds us down and holds us back. Whether it's our job, I don't want to lose my job. Man, I'm getting ready for retirement. Two more years and I can kick back. Right? 80%, man. If I throw that out, I don't put my 80% retirement. Right? That's how people talk. Of course, I don't have no job. Maybe that's why I'm talking all the time. Because I don't have no employment. The lady asked me a while back, Mr. So-and-so, where? When was your last employment? I said, 1966. 1966! I said, yes, ma'am. 1966, the last job I had. I did, I worked in a box company. I just got out here, you know, young guy. You have to work to own parole and stuff. Yes, that don't mean I don't work, right? If you work here, you got to, on a good day, you got a 12 hour day, and normally you got a 14 hour day if you work here. And don't talk about Ramadan. If you don't have to make sure the food is ready, this, that, and other, right? You're going to be, look, you're going to be tired. When you go in, you're going to be tired because you're just going to be working all day. You can't cook no food and make sure now you know in Ramadan how y'all feel. When you come here, you don't want no excuses. If that food is supposed to be hot, you want it hot. Is that right? You want the stuff, if it's juice, and if it's doggone water, you want some hot water? Heck no. You want ice flowing out of there. Right? That's what you want. You ain't going to refuse to drink the water if it's hot. But you ain't going to be friendly to the man who supplies the hot water. You know, it's normal, huh? It was 95 degrees outside. In an 18 hour day, you got fast and smoked there this morning. It's not all 9 o'clock, and he brought us some hot water. <laughs> Boy, who says the cold that day? He your email, he sure ain't mine. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, man, I ain't going over that. I'm going to bump that. That's it for me. Tell the truth. So you got to have, you know, sometimes people, I'm going to I'm close in a minute. Like I'm going to close because I'm going to just stop talking. And I just said from now on, I'm going to stop talking. And uh, forget the subject, I'm going to just stop. But, so, every now and then some people want to cook, you know. Sure, okay, go ahead. I said, I'll be here at 7.30. That means, things up, 8.30, it's piping hot, make the fast. Pray and it's fine. Everything's cold. Sometimes, y'all see the brothers, they're strolling here at 9 o'clock. Right? Don't make no difference. We done anticipated them. <coughs> we done had something already heated up and everything already. And if he come, fine. If he don't, why? I ain't taking no chances. With nobody, I am not going to face no hungry Negroes by myself for nothing. I face the white man, but I'm not facing no hungry Negroes, you know, in 95 degrees outside with hot water and, no, and cold food. A couple of biscuits, right? In other words, 
Just because you're not employed downtown and it don't go into the old folks' pension or whatever it is, working is different. When you work for the cause of Allah, it ain't the same. When you work for the cause of Allah, like I say, you just this is gonna be a 12-hour day, what 16-hour day? It don't make no difference, right? If you do something that you like doing, even white folks say you'll never work again. Because it's not work, but you still get tired every night. This says, go forth with a quick like they have been struggling for in the cause of Allah. We have a great mission here. We want to help the Muslims around the world. Being realistic, we have to be structured, we have to be organized, we have to have power. Because nobody's going to listen to you otherwise. I'm going to listen to you because you're a good brother. These groups organize for themselves, right? And they don't listen to us. No one just tell them, it ain't going to be no Arab Spring, right? And right after that, we say, Iquan should not take no power in Egypt because, number one, never let nobody give you something you can't fix. The economy, you can't fix it, right? Especially if the Israelis and the Americans is going to work against it. So if you let, if the Muslim, if Iquan accept power in Egypt under those conditions, they not thinking. And guess what? They won't listen to no Negro either. Not that we told them ten times, hey man, y'all don't let you take power over there because you can't do that. Same thing, Rashid Ganushi in, in Tunisia. But they got smart quicker. They said we can't fix this and they pulled back. But in Egypt, the brothers in the penitentiary, and they slaughtered, I don't know how many, hundreds of over a thousand people, right? They did the Muslim in Egypt this time, this old bum, more worse than Abdul Nasser did. In 54, 55, 56, Iquan in, in Egypt, right? Worse than Abdul Nasser did. This, this is today, this bum over there now. So, if you know, strategic location, position. We are here in America. If we establish Islam in the correct way, remember what we talk about calling the world to Islam, we ain't talking about no crazy nigga talk. We're talking about, remember the Quran, right? What we went through last week on the Eve. That's our mission, right? But we got to get up and do it. That's all. We got to get up and do it. We can't sit back and just take it easy. Right? If you want to help the Muslims of the world, you can do it right now from here. The fitna, the global fitna starts here. Right? That's why Saudi Arabia can bomb anybody in Yemen anywhere they want. Why? Because they're America's friend. And they said, 13 or 15 of the so-called hijackers on the, that's what they said, was from Saudi Arabia. Suppose it was from Iran. You think Iran, they done blew the place off the map. Isn't that right? Nobody could leave America. I was in California. I had to catch the bus from L.A. to, to Oakland. Because you couldn't get on no plane. But if you were from Saudi Arabia, you could stroll on a plane and leave. Nobody else in the world could leave America but Saudi Arabia. And everybody that did the so-called bombing was from Saudi Arabia. That means they have money and they have power. You and I have to develop money, power, and cohesion. People will listen to you when you make them. They'll listen to you when you make them. It's the old gangster stuff. It's not like, going to listen to you. They act technically against you. They didn't wrote every three day old articles. Oh, Islamic party, how can you be an Islamic party? Right. They hated Dar al Islam the movement. I said, hey, what's wrong with Dar al Islam? Because they talked about the Negro. Oh, Dar al Islam, so 
I said, shoot, they look pretty good to me. Right? Same thing with us. Look at our masjid here. There's the people here. Look at everybody else. The masjid got people hanging out of the mosque. And they over there scared to death. Right? Every joint, they get people killed. The little girl is killed out there because I don't know whether the little boy or whoever it is had it working out, but you have to stick with your people. And that's what you're taught in any proper place. You don't run off and leave girls and leave somebody to beat your, the, the, the young girl and throw her in a damn ditch. Right? And they all have lighting candles right now. And every time in Adam Center, Adam Center is the same place we left here and went over there and told them, we'll teach you, train you, and help you get a little backbone. We don't want it. If you ever seen somebody so scared, they don't want you to teach them how to fight? And everybody looking at their house, riding by looking at their house, and said, well, we teach you how to fight. Oh, we'll teach you how to run. You can run, you can fight. I don't want you to run. I don't want to run. I don't want to fight. I'm an American. I said, good. Then you're going to get your, see, the immigrant don't know that America will knock the fat off of your head. Isn't that right? <laughs> we all know that. They don't know that. No, this is America. This is America, and they got justice over here. I said, boy, goodness, God, crazy life. What's the old imam over there? The, Adams, I forget his name. Who well, I see him, good God Almighty, as soon as he, uh, you know, I, I'm going over. I'm close. Yeah, I got two more words to say. Here's a, go over there, hold on. It's a big funeral in places full of people leaving. He looks over and see me and ducks off. So I get up on the elevator, I go up to the third floor. You know they're doing all right, they got elevated. So I go up on the elevator. Then I go, as soon as I come off the elevator, a Pakistani brother says, can I help you? I said, I'm coming to see my daughter. He's not here. I said, is that right? I just walked right around the corner and there he was. <laughs> oh, you my Musa, I miss you so much. I said, I know you miss me. I miss you too. <laughs> We're going to help y'all. What was it, $100,000 or something? To them, this is this. That's all we need. That's it. Chump change. We went to one meeting, and the Muslims out there, Sterling said, because all the black people was talking about, we need to arrange some money scheme. They said, well, they said, money. Who was it? Who was it to me? They said, money is no problem. Is money a problem with you? Money problem, you got a money problem. Anybody in here got a money problem? Anybody don't have a money problem? In here. Right? They didn't have no money problem. I'm trying to tell you. The brothers do not know America, and you can't help them unless you, if you go tell them how to live in America, you, know, you should roll up your sleeves and make more money. You guys, you black people are just lazy. And you won't take advantage of America. I said, you yeah, you take advantage. I said, the girl that they shoot a lady the other day, a pregnant lady. Mm -hmm. Well, what did she do? <laughs> That's the black. <laughs> what did she do? Like she needed it. She she must have done something with the police wouldn't have shot. Right? They don't believe that the police, when they get up in the morning, they don't believe. There is a big percentage of white police that want to shoot it. If I get me, this may be my day. I may be get a chance to shoot a nigga. You may be at least to beat one upside the head. They don't believe that a human being thinks like that. And we know that's the only way they think. Right? That's why they got a badge. And I close with this. We got to get quick because we got to change the laws, change the whole focus of America. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this uh, on Sunday. Because the job of the government is what? To 
domestic tranquility, to protect the people, right? That's what the preamble said. Have America protected you? Have America protected us from drugs? They talk about to secure the borders. Have they secured the borders? No, it's Haran swooping in on us, and then they punish you. They were supposed to keep the Haran out, but they punish you for using what probably they brought in. Isn't that right? We got to change that. These people are going crazy. They have not domestic tranquility. Where's your domestic tranquility? Right? Constitutionally, they supposed to secure the borders and make me and you feel safe. Of course, I feel safe. These knots right here, they have a couple of polarities, they heal. But I got these knots, you couldn't, my hat would sit on the side. I couldn't sit like this, and, you know, because the knot sticking out of the hat won't change size, and so the head would go right down and sit right on that knot this little while, so now it's drifting away. Let's make America, not America the great, but America the good. Well, allow we seek that refuge from anxiety and grief, we seek that refuge from life and strength and laziness, we seek that refuge from cowardice and regardless, we seek that refuge from being overpowered by death and the oppression of men, or allow suffice it what is lawful, keeping us what is prohibited. With that grace, make us free from one and put it aside. I mean.